Hi, welcome to High Five Live Temple Testimonies. I'm Carrie Ann Hoops. I am so grateful to be here today on this Tuesday morning with um, a whole bunch of seminary friends and friends that aren't <laughs> seminary friends. And it's amazing um, what these youth have done for their sweet friend Maddie. Um, if you guys remember, we had done a little uh, video, a couple of, it was about what, six weeks ago, Lenise, that we did that? About six weeks ago. Um, about an incredible gesture that these friends did and we're doing a follow-up um, about this story tell us where you're tuning in from and let us know your closest temple let us know something that has inspired you in your life or a kind gesture that somebody has done for you. Story. okay so my friends and I have a friend and she was really sick um, so October-ish, she was no longer able to attend school and she no longer was able to attend seminary, had constant hospital visits. And so one day um, I got a text from a friend and she was saying, hey, do you wanna participate in a 40 day fast? And so me, I was like, I don't really wanna fast for 40 days. That's a long time, <laughs> but- um, It's a lot more than we're asked to yeah, do, right? I can barely do two <laughs> meals. And so it was a lot. But she explained it to me that um, it was gonna be my whole friend group and we were each gonna take a day. And so how it worked was it started on the 17th of um, December and it started at 4 p.m. and you end at 4 p.m. And then the next person started 4 p.m. and ended at 4 p.m. So everyone was always ending 4 p.m., starting 4 p.m. And at first it was really challenging because we never fasted a day. Like that's a long time to not go with food and water. And during that time, we had theater productions, we had work, we had sporting events, we had school, we had church. It was just a lot to- Well, and if you think of December 17th, that means they were fasting Christmas, Christmas Day, Christmas yeah. Eve, We did have friends New fasting Christmas, and Christmas, yeah, Eve Christmas and Christmas Eve and New Year's. Eve. So it was just, it was really challenging, but um, we all took it and we all decided this is for Maddie, like this is what we need to do. And so we all, there's a schedule, so we all knew when um, everyone was fasting, we always knew whose turn, who to pray for, for the strength to fast. And I remember when my day came, it was hard. Um, two day, two meals is already hard enough. Um, going a full day was, it was exhausting. It felt like it took forever, but I've never felt the spirit more strong because I knew that it wasn't for me, it was for someone else. And by the end of the fast, we, we were gonna wrap it up with um, like a meal, like break the fast kind of thing. And some of us decided that we needed to go to the temple to really like break this fast and to make it more meaningful. And so we ended it. And then um, three weeks later, I had another friend in the same friend group and she wanted to do another four day fast, but we opened it up to the seminary. And so my seminary teacher allowed us to pass around a sheet and we were able to do another 40 day fast that I was able to be a part of also. And it was very, it was awesome. Like it was probably one of the best spiritual experience I've ever experienced. And Maddie, she was able to, she didn't know about our fasting. We, we never said to not tell anyone, but we also said to not tell Maddie cause we didn't want her to be like, to say no, but she was able to, really feel the blessings of fasting and she had no idea until the end of both of them that we were fasting for her and it was really just a neat experience and they, this was initiated yeah. by the youth by the youth tell tell me a little bit about why you guys were inspired to do this what what inspired this gesture um i think so me and me and elizabeth um, right here, we were talking one day, we were like, okay, like, we were thinking about Maddie, and um, we know that she struggles a lot, and we were thinking, like, okay, like, what can we do to help her? Um, and and so we're, like, kind of talking, we're like, well, we could just, like, have, like, a, a day where we all fast, and I was like, well, I remember, like, in my ward, we would do, like, a 40-day fast, like, the missionaries, where we take turns fasting, and I was like, well, we have enough friends, and enough people would want to do that, because everyone loves Maddie, and so um, we kind of just like reached out to people and saw if they were, were willing to like um, participate in the fast. And um, so. Yeah, so we just, we asked um, all of our friends and all of Maddie's friends if they would be willing and interested in participating in this fast for Maddie. And it was so cool how many people 
responded positively to this and wanted to be a part of this. And part of that story was that nobody knew about this. Like, I, so my daughter, you guys know Ashley. My, I didn't know she was part of it, actually, until I was like, it was like a day before we did that last feed. So nobody knew about this. This was not like, they didn't, I mean, it was private. And it was confidential, like, so that, did you even know Maddie? I didn't find out until about two weeks after they did a second. So, so yeah, they, we, did, so, we, did, we, did, we did a couple of these. Yeah. It wasn't just one. And, and that's what's so incredible about this story is that it wasn't done so that there was a visibility. This was done so that the true love of Christ was shown, and that's what's amazing. So can you guys tell us a little bit about some of the inspiration that came or um, experiences or how this changed your life? So... This whole thing has really strengthened my testimony about fasting. And I know we didn't, we didn't intend for this to be for our benefit. We were, this was always about Maddie. But when we were doing it, I'm, like I'm, a, I'm a growing boy, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so fasting, fasting isn't always the easiest thing for me because I... I'm pretty big. I need a lot of food. But as I, <laughs> as I was, she just whispered to him, "Stand up." I think you need to stand up. So, <laughs> tall swimmer. <laughs> so, and he always eats. Yeah. So, always he always, always has time. like four sandwiches in his backpack. Like he always has a bunch of food. <laughs> so fasting isn't always the easiest thing for me. But as we were doing this for Maddie, and we were just focusing on her. And what we were doing this for, I could really, I could feel the strength from Heavenly Father, and I, I could feel like I wasn't hungry anymore. <laughs> I just focused on what the true purpose was, and it really strengthened my testimony to the end. So, thank you, Maddie, for that. Well, not even that, but he also had some doozies going on. We were at play practice every day, and we all decided uh, we we're going to do this fast, even though we kind of needed the energy. To get yeah. through your day yeah. and physically. Just, just and, a normal yeah. physical, like, we would go and we would dance for, what, four hours a day? Yeah. And sing. Yeah. And we would have school and we had all this stuff going on. I had school, track, and newsies going on all day. I was going from 6 a.m. till 7 p.m., 9 p.m. every night. So somebody explain how the fast happened. It wasn't just, like, a two-meal fast. It, right. Somebody no, yeah. 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 Right. It was from, like, 4 p.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. I would start at 4 p.m. one day, and I would go for 24 hours, and 4 and p.m. the next day, up. somebody else would pick up, and it would just continue to go. Yeah. And yeah. it actually yeah. was over 40 days, too. There was, like, yeah, we had there was like, like 40-something. 47 people-ish. Yeah. We had it. Yeah. So it went yeah. There were some people who yeah. doubled on days, too. Yeah. There were even then, like, if I, I would, there would be people coming up to me all the time, like, hey, I heard about this 40 day fast, where'd I sign up? I'm like, we're already filled out, man, but we <laughs> just fast for fun. That was a good some problem us, to have. Yeah. Some of us went more than one day during the thing. I know I went yeah, at least three. Yeah, the first three. one we had, yeah. we had multiple the first time. The second time around, we had more people actually involved because I went and talked to like seminary, like different seminary classes yeah. and I like reached out to some non-member friends to try and like invite more people to like participate in this because not only was it good for more people to be able to to pray for Maddie but also this was a huge testimony builder for me. I want to share that with other people. Yeah. I'll, I'll go next, I guess. So this whole experience, like, it really strengthened my testimony, like AJ was saying. Like, for me, it was about fasting. It was about, like, the unity and the love of Christ. Because, mm -hmm. like, when I was fasting, my siblings, AJ and Elizabeth, would, like, reach out and, like, make sure I was doing okay. And when they were fasting, I'd do the same for them. It just, like, really helped me realize that we truly are not alone. And I wanted to share that with Maddie. So, yeah. I am absolutely with both. Liv and AJ. My, I mean, my family has always been pretty big on fasting, so like every month on Fast Sunday, it's like, gotta do it. But we don't usually go a full 24 hours. I had never gone a full 24 hours before. I'm a snacker. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> but, I mean, it was easier than some of the shorter fasts that I do on the month because I knew that I was something part I was a part of something way bigger than myself and that moment when I was 
taking over from someone else and passing over. I didn't know who was taking over for me, but I knew that it was some big network and that someone else was taking this thing. And I was helping continue it. It wasn't just me doing a fast and it was so cool and I had so much strength. Amazing experience. I, uh, I remember um, I was fasting on Thanksgiving and <laughs> was it Christmas? Yeah, it was Christmas. Oh, oh okay. that's right. It was Christmas. I was fasting on Christmas um, morning and I remember like thinking like, okay, I can do this. Like, I got it. I, I'm doing it. Cause I, nobody else wanted to fast on Christmas. So I was like, okay. <laughs> but, um, I remember like, I'm a diabetic. So fasting is, is kind of a hard thing for me to do. And so I have to do a lot of prayer and preparation beforehand. Um, and like I remember getting on Christmas, like I remember getting really sick because I, I didn't eat, but I was like, you know, like I I need to finish this just for Maddie and I honestly I wouldn't recommend that. But <laughs> but personally like it was such a, like a like a thing for me to be like, okay, like Maddie feels sick like all the time, you know, like and I I if I can be sick for like like one day, like that's not even a big deal to me because she's and I if I'm helping her then it's like then I, I can be sick for a little bit. And we can seriously do anything for you, Maddie. <laughs> like, does anybody else have any thoughts? I first want to know how it affected Jeff because he's not a member. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not really a member. I'm actually Catholic, but uh, I still love him. Yeah. Um, I joined this fast because I didn't really see it as more of like. Um, Thing with religion it was more like just try to help out Maddie and just to ask like Christ to help out because I know Maddie's going through a rough time and I just I've actually never done 24 hours it was <laughs> it was really rough like I know I know the first 12 I slept through I, I really <laughs> the time. but then after that I kind of just prayed just most of the day and it really helped me out it strengthened my faith in God and just, I kind of realized what the whole purpose of it was. It just unified everyone, and yeah. Well, that's that's the beauty of Christ, is that it's not Mormon or Catholic or Baptist. This is just about the love of Christ and about um, service and caring about each other, and that's what you guys have done. It's crazy to see how this, like, the love for Maddie can be so universal. Mm -hmm. And all of us have so many different personalities <laughs> and so many different friend groups or, like, different religions, things like that, but just the unity of coming together to help one person is incredible. Um, I think one of the things that's a, that needs to be said is that this wasn't about any of that, and, and it was really just about helping Maddie, even if you were doing it individually, but there's something to be said about strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. That when you do that, because <laughs> this is, this is incredible that this happened twice. Not just once, but twice that you guys just continued it again. Does anybody have any other thoughts they want to share? Yeah. I do, real quickly. There was a, um, a lot of healing for me personally that went on during these 40-day fasts, and I had no idea about this. Like, they weren't ever like, don't tell Maddie, it's a secret. We just didn't tell her. <laughs> they just didn't tell her. <laughs> <Like, laughs> um, I was very, very sick before they started it, and even about halfway through, I think is when I had my tube placed, I started doing better, and then like a second wave hit, and that's, uh, apparently that's when they started the second one, and I had no idea, and the day that they ended the second one, I had kind of like a miraculous, like, disappearance of some really horrible like symptoms and I had no idea until two weeks later and I believe that it was totally because of their strength and their faith and I'm so grateful for them and for their kindness and compassion and willingness to do this. Thank you so much for your guys' <laughs> example. I, I know as adults um, we're just not, you guys inspire me all the time. And as we sat last night at <coughs> seminary graduation and I thought that somebody said, this is, this is our, our future generation. This is, 
you guys are that. You guys are the examples and continue doing good and being good and sharing kindness because this is one of the most incredible stories I've ever experienced. And to find out that my own child was part of it, and I didn't know till way after, way, <laughs> way more than two weeks later, um, I kind of got mad when I found out. <laughs> I was like, no, I think it was, I think I told you when you were on the way to like Nisa's house, and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, was, I was part of that. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a while ago. I'm so grateful for all of you guys. I I know that the Lord is pleased, and I mean, it, it's just incredible to see this kind of charitable love um, be so given without any expectation in return. Is this, but to coordinate all of the schedules of all of these kids in four different grades, different schools, <laughs> um, this is the way that we had to do it. And I wanted to share this element as we, as you'll see in the recording, these kids are incredible. But what you didn't see on camera was as we got to the building and everybody was kind of coming together, there was hugs and there was just this um, expression of love for each other, this unity that they had built as they did this together. Um, so many of these kids don't see each other like regularly. Um, some of them aren't in the same class and this spread like wildfire. They were just incredible to share with, um, me some of the tender experiences that they had, uh, before we went on camera and I've heard some of the experiences even off camera, but this is what I wanted to share with you is that even when the, the camera stopped rolling this morning, the excitement from Maddie of knowing that people cared about her and had worked so hard for her. Um, you could tell had touched her heart. I was so touched as I walked into brother Chatwin, who is their seminary teacher, um, who I'd like to talk a little bit about him. We asked him if he would like any part of this. And his response was, this has nothing to do with me. This is all the kids. Well, as you can see, I shared a picture with him in his office and he has this wall of seniors that have graduated that he has taught and he shared a story with me that I hope he's okay with me sharing that he's got kids that he had taught from a previous seminary building that would still give him, they wanted to be on that wall of graduates that had had him and would bring these announcements to him. There is a spirit about Brother Chatwin that these kids gravitate to and that these kids want to be around him because he is a light. In the feed, as you saw, our friend Carl, he said, um, as he texted me some things this right after, he said, I'm Carl the Catholic. How grateful I am for these kids to reach out with no boundaries of religion or anything, because this isn't about religion. This is about love and this is about trust and about um, charity and the pure love of Christ. And, and he saw that. And it, what an incredible experience I feel to be a part of it, to see this this morning as they came together to discuss this life-changing experience that they all participated in and nobody knew about. As a mom, I wasn't kidding when I said I was frustrated that I didn't know about it. My daughter didn't think twice. She didn't think, well, I better tell my mom. She's going to be mad that I didn't tell her something. It wasn't about that. This was bigger than them. This was about serving somebody and loving Christ the way that Christ would have loved somebody serving them without any desire for anybody to know. And that is what this story is about. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, don't forget to tell us where you're from. And if you feel like there's somebody who could be benefit, could benefit from this message or um, somebody who needs this inspiration to please like and share this. Have a rest of your day, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>